Good morning, and welcome to Old St. Mary's Church. My name is Sophie Marcus. I am a seventh grader in Mrs. Ayers and Mrs. Nesvig's seventh grade homeroom. Today is Monday, June 5th, 2023, in the ninth week in ordinary time. Today is the feast day of St. Boniface, an 8th century English Benedictian monk known as the Apostle of the Germans. Please stand and join us in our opening song, number, 900, <clears throat> number 925. All are welcome. Number 925. And we'll, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Well, welcome to our closing Mass of the school year, which you know what that means. Final exam time. <laughs> so pay close attention to our readings today and what it tells you about Jesus. And as we come before him, let us also ask for his help and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you have gathered us in the light of your kingdom. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have instructed us by our attentiveness to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have placed the spirit in our hearts that we can continue to give insight to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, 
May the martyr, St. Boniface, be our advocate, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed with his blood, and confidently profess it by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Let's be seated and listen to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul said, King Agrippa, I obeyed this vision from heaven. First I preached to the people in Damascus, and then I went to Jerusalem and all over Judea. Finally, I went to the Gentiles and said, Stop sinning and turn to God. Then prove what you have done by the way you live. That is why some men grabbed me in the temple and tried to kill me. But all this time, God has helped me, and I have preached both to the rich and to the poor. I have told them only what the prophets and Moses said would happen. I told them how the Messiah would suffer and be the first to be raised from death, so that he could bring light to his own people and to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Slow to anger, 
rich in kindness, the Lord is kind and merciful. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives up his life for his sheep. Hired workers are not like the shepherd. They don't own the sheep, and when they see a wolf coming, they run off and leave the sheep. Then the wolf attacks and scatters the flock. Hired workers run away because they don't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father and I give up my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen. I must also bring them together when they hear my voice. And then there will be one flock of sheep and one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I said, there's a final exam that's part of this homily. But before we get there, we get to talk about a couple of other things first. Um, how many of you remember the name of the saint of the day? I see a few. How about seventh graders? Sophie? St. Boniface, right. Now, how many of you have relatives named Boniface? Really? Great. So that's at least a couple because we've got a couple over here, so you two should talk. St. Boniface is kind of an unusual guy, an unusual saint. He was born in the 600s. He lived in the 700s since the 8th century. He was born in England. Now, you ready for the big surprise? He became a priest at the age of 13. Yeah, that's pretty young. He probably wouldn't pass the screening process today. But he also became a monk. So as we heard, he was a Benedictine monk. And, uh, and even though he started out in England, he was always wanting to do missionary work. He always wanted to bring the message of Jesus to other people. And what we call that is when people go and they tell the story about Jesus to other people, it's called evangelization. It's a big fancy word that means to tell the gospel. And that's exactly what Boniface did. Except Boniface was really smart. And he was a really good teacher. So, you know, as we come to the end of our school year, it's helpful for us to remember, you know, we're surrounded by really good teachers. How about a round of applause for all our teachers? So what do really good teachers need? Or any teacher needs? 
Easy answer. Yes. Students. There we go. Okay. And so that's, that's what Boniface had. He had students that he was telling people about Jesus to. And then he got called because the Pope recognized not just was he a really good teacher, but he was really smart. So he decided to make him a bishop. And he made him a bishop and sent him to Germany, where there weren't a lot of Christians. But he went there and started telling people about Jesus, about Christ. And he was telling lots of people, and he, he won converts. There, there were people that started following Jesus because of him. But there were other people that didn't like that he was helping people understand who Jesus was. And so the reason for the red today is they killed him and his followers. But the message of Jesus continued to spread. So when we think about Boniface, we, we think about his, his willingness to give his life to make the message of Jesus known. Now, if we take that and we look at our first reading from Acts of the Apostles, we also have Paul. And you know what's going to happen to Paul at the end of his story, too, is he is going to die for his faith as well. But what we heard in today's reading was that Paul wasn't content just to tell Jewish people about how Jesus had come and risen and changed the life of the world. He was out and about and going to the whole world. He was going to the Gentiles. He was going to people who had never heard about Jesus before. And so Paul also is an evangelizer. He's one of those people telling the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And when we get to the gospel, then we see this Jesus. Now, you've heard this before. We, we've had this reading at least twice before, once on Sunday and once during one of our school masses. Jesus as the good shepherd. But this one has a little twist in it. You know, Jesus is all about taking care of his flock, that is, taking care of us. But notice that at the end of the reading, did you notice something unusual at the end of the reading? He said there were other flocks that he had to preach to, that he had to take the message to. So what we mean by that is that we understand that Jesus' message is not meant just for the people that are around him. It's meant to go out to the whole world. So here's the final exam question. And I will, I will take hand raises, then I'll take five answers, and, and we'll see, maybe they're all the same. So. The question is this. So you as kids in a grade school that is Catholic, called Old St. Mary's, have been studying for the last year about Jesus by your class participation, by your family life at home, by the times that you've come to Mass and other religious services. And during the whole course of this year, You've been hearing your teachers and others talk to you about Jesus. Hopefully you've been talking to each other about Jesus and trying to figure out more about him. So here's the question. Is the story about Jesus meant only for the Christians or people that go to a religious school? Or is it meant to go to other people? We'll do one here, because you're close. Other people. Okay, we got an other people. How about here? Other people. Okay. Let's see. How about... Yes. Other people. So we're three for three with other people. Oh, let's see. Let's go way back, because I need the exercise. Yes. Other people. Oh, we're four for four. Then there's this group. I don't see any hand raised. Way in the back. Okay. Other people. Okay. When we say other people, do we mean we get to tell about Jesus to Jewish people? Yes or no? Okay. I heard a lot of yeses. That would be the right track. Okay. When we're talking about Jesus, do we get to talk to Muslims about that? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, okay? When we talk about Jesus, do we get to talk to people that don't believe or aren't certain that there's God? 
yes. So the answer to all of those are yes. Is it easier with other Christians? No. Okay. So the, the answer should be yes. So the final exam answer is this. At the end of the gospel, when Jesus says there are other people that don't belong to this flock, he means that he was sent for the whole world. We learn about Jesus if you go back to the beginning of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the Word is Jesus. So before the world was created, the world was created by Jesus. Jesus is the word that God used to create our world. And so the message of who Jesus is, as, as we come to know about him in the stories that we tell throughout the whole year, you know, we, we start, we talk at Christmas about Je how Jesus is born. But of course, we get ready for that by talking about how Mary leads us to Jesus. But then Jesus grows up and he starts telling people all this stuff. And nowhere, nowhere in the gospel does Jesus say, you have to be Christians. Nowhere does he tell you what you have to be. He tells you that you are loved by God and you get a chance to share that love with other people and he doesn't put any restrictions on that. So when Jesus says there are all these other people that, that think about this, we still have to love them. We still have to care about them. We still have to help them to understand this message. And it's the message of Jesus' love that takes us forward. So as we come to the end of another Catholic school year, hopefully we've made progress in saying that there are people that are going to resist us, that, that don't get Jesus, that don't understand. But Jesus' ultimate message is, I love you, and I want you to see that God loves you. And I want you to see that that changes people's lives. So people who are hurting, he wants to give comfort. People who are sad, he wants to dry their tears and, and lead them forward. People that are confused, he wants to straighten things out. People that are worried, he wants to uh, give them a peaceful way forward. And in a world that, that's afraid, that, that is too violent, he wants to take away the violence and he wants to take away the fear and give us hope. So today, as we come to this school year's end, let us resolve that over the course of the summer that the lessons we've learned about how to love people will guide us forward in how we treat others. And let us pray also that over the course of the summer, we will be open to how Jesus is speaking to each of us in our own hearts, because he is there for each and every one of us. And the more we see him with us, the more he will strengthen us to be like him and to be lovers of those around us, and the more peaceful our planet will become. So that would be a good final exam answer, that Jesus wins. All those that think Jesus wins, give him a round of applause. And have a blessed summer. Now let's stand as we speak our prayers to this same God who loves us, who sent Jesus into our midst to know us and to hear what we need. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Supich, and the leaders of the church throughout the world, that their leadership inspires us all to follow the words of Jesus our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for world leaders that they are inspired to serve the needs of their communities and strive for world peace, we pray, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the old St. Mary's community, that we may continue to be a welcoming and joyful community, accepting and serving the words of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the teachers of Old St. Mary's, that they have a restful and relaxing summer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students of Old St. Mary's, that they have a safe and happy summer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
For the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and those who live without life's basic necessities, may their needs be met and they be blessed with hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed away, especially for Peter Schoberly, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for those who join us online. We continue to pray for those who do not yet know Christ, that they will be guided to know him and accept him. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, accept us and our prayers that we place before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing number 894, unless a grain of wheat, number 894. Sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memory of Blessed Boniface, we pray that you may pour out your blessing from heaven on these offerings that we have made to you, that in partaking of them we may be without fault and be replenished with heavenly food 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He has always showed compassion for children, for the poor, for the sick, for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, most merciful Father, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to bless these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on that night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions 
to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our patron, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul and St. Boniface, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. In the words Jesus gave us, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us sing, Blessed are the poor. On page.
Let us pray. O Lord, may your holy gifts, which we have received, fill us with life, so that we who rejoice in commemorating the blessed Boniface may also promise profit from his example of apostolic virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads to receive God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you be constant in holy deeds. Amen. And may he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving one another. Thank you. Let us sing number 759. Lead me, guide me, number 759.